Well, thanks so much. So five things that we are going to discuss that can really help you decide about cloud technologies. Of course, this is content drawn from our Cloud Essentials course here at CBT Nuggets. I highly encourage you to go through that course as we are just scratching the surface of the type of information that you're going to find in that valuable, valuable course that we put together. So first off, let's discuss some common myths when it comes to cloud. One of the first things that many people think is that with cloud, there's going to be this single level of great service that we can achieve. This is something that you want to watch out for. When we design a cloud solution, we're actually going to be designing different levels of service for different services and applications that we're going to be implementing through the cloud services. So there's no single one size fits all, one stop shop typically when it comes to moving key infrastructures or applications to the cloud. Something else that I want to dispel is the myth that you're going to be able to lay off all your IT employees. <laughs> Thank goodness this isn't the case. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say we have an employee that you have on your IT staff and their main job is security when it comes to the network operating system. Maybe this is something like Windows 2016 server. If that's their job, that is going to remain their job. Sure, they may be doing this against the Windows Server 2016 systems that you have in your cloud implementation, but not much is going to change for their job at all. In fact, we'll probably just have to teach them how we want them to securely connect to that device or to those devices that are spun up in the public cloud, for instance, and they're going to be off and running, securing those systems, just like they would be doing if those systems were located in your traditional data center. Something else that we need to dispel is that the cloud is not just marketing hype. So many people, because they hear so much about cloud technologies in the trade magazines and newspapers and commercials, think that it's all just a bunch of hype and that there's not really mechanisms that will assist them in their IT infrastructures. And that simply is not true. Sure, you might not be moving everything to the cloud tomorrow, but when you look at what the cloud can do for you in certain areas, it's very compelling and there's a very good chance you will be moving at least part of your services or part of your infrastructure to some type of cloud, be it private, public, hybrid, community, you name it. Now, the final thing to say, of course, is that a big myth here is that there is no security when we go to cloud, or at the very least, we sacrifice a bunch of security. It just couldn't be farther from the truth. If we're doing public cloud with, let's say, Amazon Web Services, for instance, we are going to have this intense security model, and it's going to be called the shared security model, and there's going to be things that AWS are doing wonderfully for us. For instance, they're going to be doing the physical security on the physical resources of our network brilliantly. It's going to be our responsibility to do other aspects of the security, though. For instance, I gave the example earlier about securing those Windows Server 2016 systems, and this is certainly going to fall in our responsibilities in that shared security model. And working together with Amazon Web Services like this will often give us a more secure IT infrastructure or services than ever before possible. So a big time myth that we have no security. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is really, is the cloud right for you? I mean, how would you even assess something like that? Well, like we're looking at maybe some stock we want to invest in, you would want to look at the positive indicators and weigh those against the negative indicators. So some positive indicators that the cloud might be right for us is that we're having issues with scalability. Remember, scalability is our ability to grow our IT infrastructure as the demand for that IT infrastructure grows. If we're really having trouble scaling the IT you know, resources and infrastructure, then cloud might really be able to help us there. The other thing that could be uh, the opposite side of this spectrum would be that we have 
always a ton of excess capacity. We don't want that either. We don't want to go in and provision our resources for IT way, way high and just be using a little bit of that. So the cloud can help us with that as well. In fact, it's a parameter of the cloud or a characteristic we call elasticity. This is really, really cool and allows our IT resources to scale up dynamically with high demand and then retract dynamically as demand becomes lower. Maybe we don't have the capital that would be required to get our startup off the ground. Cloud can certainly help with that. And finally, maybe we have a user base that is just constantly varying. It might be great for us to move to cloud in that situation. So notice a bunch of positive indicators that we can pinpoint that would really indicate we're ready for the cloud. Now, what would be some negative indicators though? Well, maybe we have really predictable utilization. So we have no problem keeping up with it. Maybe we've made a tremendous investment in complex data centers already for our organization. Maybe we have compliance requirements that the cloud vendor that we are looking at can't meet. And finally, maybe we have a service that we provide that we just absolutely need to be able to maintain the highest level of operational assurance with. A uh, kind of silly example of this, I suppose, but I think it brings the point home, would be like 911, the emergency services here in the United States. If we have a service like that, that is absolutely mission critical, we might need to control all of that in a more traditional IT setting to make sure the performance is absolutely 100% always there at the level we need it to be at. Now, what are some challenges and risks that we would experience in moving to the cloud potentially? Well, certainly we really have to look at application or network infrastructure performance. Now, fortunately, most of our cloud providers that we might end up working with are going to provide us with excellent tools that we can use to carefully monitor just the kind of performance that we're getting. We can also do our own monitoring, of course, as well. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we are living up to the service level agreements that are in place. Now, when it comes to SLAs, realize this may be an SLA that we give out to our customer. So we want to make sure that they're experiencing the satisfaction levels they need and want from our services. And then, of course, we have an SLA from, let's say we go with a public cloud provider like Amazon Web Services, we want to make sure that we are getting the SLA that they have promised us, that we've contracted with them. Bandwidth and the associated latency is something that we definitely can see as a challenge. Maybe we have customers that are now accessing resources from a public cloud implementation and they're reporting that there are bandwidth issues that they're experiencing. And we can even pinpoint at that, at that juncture that, oh my gosh, it's not their issue. It's a problem with our provider. So that would be a problem, for instance. How about resource availability? This is something that with the big cloud vendors like a Microsoft Azure or a Google Cloud or an IBM or an Amazon, we're typically not going to have an issue with. But if you're partnering with some smaller cloud provider, maybe they're literally unable to dedicate the resources to you that you need. Maybe you need massive amounts of storage, massive numbers of virtual CPUs, incredible amounts of virtual RAM. And maybe they're just not able to do that. Notice that a lot of these tend to work both ways. So resource availability could certainly be a challenge or a risk, but it could also end up being a major factor for you moving to the cloud. Maybe you can't afford those raw resources, so you need to move to a virtualized implementation using cloud technologies. Storage is certainly a challenge or a risk. Are you going to have the storage that you need? And most particularly, are you going to have the speed, the input and output operations per second that you're going to need when it comes to writing data to the cloud and reading data from the cloud? There's certainly lots of data challenges and risks. For instance, 
Are you going to be able to replicate data between different sites properly? Is your internal data of your organization going to be able to integrate properly with the data that you've got in the cloud? And are you going to have the appropriate mechanisms for transport? If you want to go ahead and start offloading, let's say all these JPEG images that make up your business, are you going to be able to do that effectively and securely when it comes time to moving, let's say, terabytes or exabytes worth of data from your own data center up to the cloud? And of course, we know while there is great security available to us with cloud technologies, as we've already discussed in this webinar, we also need to realize that security is certainly a challenge. And we may have to learn a new security model and be able to have our IT staff work towards that model as we do more and more resources in the cloud. Now, the fourth big thing I wanted to discuss with you in this webinar is some ideas regarding steps to deployment. If you've done the analysis and cloud is definitely for you, at least with a part of your IT infrastructure, well then here's some steps for you to think about. Now notice this is not the end all be all list of steps and you might skip some of these or you may have additional steps in the process, but it's often really great to start out by piloting some of your services. Oftentimes what companies will do is they'll begin with software as a service. They'll say, all right, look, we're going to initially pilot the move to cloud by getting rid of the exchange servers that we have on-prem and going with an Azure solution for exchange. And so they start working with Azure that way just for this email software as a service implementation. Once they begin to trust Microsoft's cloud model, once they begin to understand it, then they can start moving more and more services to Azure. But notice it starts out with a very simple pilot. Now, if they are considering a bigger move, like taking their infrastructure as a service and moving it up to Azure, for example, well, they'll probably want to do some modeling of that in Azure. And the great news is, one of the reasons we love cloud is they make it easy to do this. You can go up with a free tier account at Azure, and you can spin up the network resources that you're considering moving, and you can literally test and test and test and test and then you can take all that modeled equipment and you can tear it all down and then you can go ahead and actually do the implementation if you want to. So one of the things that we love about cloud is how easy it is to do testing and proofs of concept up there with the virtual resources that we can create. Something else that you would want to do as a next step would be to take a look at the roles and responsibilities and figure out exactly who's doing what. We've alluded to that a little bit in this webinar already when it came to security. So what are the exact roles and responsibilities that your cloud vendor is going to have? What are the exact roles and responsibilities that you're going to have? You should also do a thorough risk assessment. You might do this before you move to the cloud and then again after you move to the cloud. So you're assessing what are the exact risks now and how can you mitigate or reduce the fact of those risks actually occurring and then of course get all your good disaster recovery planning in order. We like to call this a fallback plan. So maybe we have our infrastructure in the cloud now. What happens when key components of that infrastructure is not available? How are you going to respond? What is the failback plan for a situation like that? And then finally, you'll need to take a good hard look at your own IT staff and your own IT structure and start to think about what is going to be the impact on that IT team. In fact, I'd like to wrap up with that discussion as our fifth point today in this webinar. Oftentimes with our IT department and our move to cloud, or at least partial move to cloud, we need to start training them on the subtle differences between availability and reliability. Now, we will have this done in a traditional IT model as well. This is certainly something that's important there, but I think it becomes more important than ever when we talk about cloud technologies. Think about this now. 
availability is going to be a reference to whether the resource is there or not. So can users hit some resource? Maybe it's software as a service. Maybe it's infrastructure as a service. Maybe it's platform as a service for your internal developers. Is that resource actually there? That's availability. There are mechanisms that the IT department can take advantage of with cloud technologies to always make sure something is there. But, in fact, let me just give an example of that. Let's say there's a key database. Well, one of the things that we can do is we can replicate that database to another location so that if something happens with the primary copy, we can have users redirected to the redundant replica copy of the database. So that makes sure that the database is highly available. Make sure it's there. But oftentimes, just as important with a cloud move is the reliability. Reliability is no no longer really a focus on is the resource there. What reliability is going to do is really focus on is it performing the way it should? Are we getting that service level agreement that we may have promised or that we may be paying for? And so that's super important. So we want to look at the reliability closely and train our IT staff to be monitoring not just for availability, but also reliability. Now, let's talk about a sample technology that would help give reliability. And in the case of Amazon Web Services, as an example, that would be auto scaling. So what you can do is you can go in and you can spin up, let's say you spin up some Linux servers and you initially spin up four of these. And then you say, okay, look, there may be great periods of demand. We want Amazon Web Service to be able to spin up additional Linux servers as we need them. And we would love Amazon to also handle for us taking those offline when they're no longer needed. So auto scaling is something that could be done to really enhance the reliability, the performance we're getting with certain cloud resources. Now, something else that you need to really make sure of with your IT team is that just because you've moved to the cloud that they don't forget to follow a proper life cycle approach to the services, to the infrastructures that you're doing with the cloud. So if we look at the ITIL model, for example, we'll see that the ITIL model says we should start with strategy, then we should start with design, then we should focus on operation, and then we should focus on transition measures, like we are going to be retiring some application, and then we're going to be spinning up a new application as part of the transition. So. Our IT staff needs to be reminded and educated on the life cycle approach to software and services and infrastructures that we might be doing with the cloud because just because it's cloud-based doesn't mean a system life cycle isn't perfectly appropriate for that component. Well, I know there's going to be lots of questions that you have for me in the area of cloud, so let's save plenty of time for those questions here in this webinar.